Have you ever dreamed of owning a Florida home where you can dock your boat behind your property? Or have you looked at waterfront homes in Punta Gorda Isles and known there was something with the pricing that involved the water, but you weren't exactly sure how it worked? This video is for you. Yo, I'm Adrian, longtime Florida realtor, and I'm here to help you get your Florida life. In this video, I'm gonna cover the boating waters of Punta Gorda Isles. This video is not only important if you wanna own a boat in Punta Gorda Isles, but if you are thinking about, about buying prop, waterfront property in Punta Gorda Isles, you are going to want to watch this because all of our pricing is dependent on the boating water. So if you've seen two houses online and thought, why are these priced so differently? You're probably gonna find out in this video. Now there is a main map that I drew myself, you'll see, uh, that shows a lot of what you're gonna need to know. I do have a relocation guide, it's in the uh, caption below, you can just click on the link. So you don't need to memorize the map, there won't be a quiz later, don't try to screenshot it, just get the relocation guide and you're good to go. Let's get started. Okay, let's start with a quick overview of the area so you know what we're looking at and then we're gonna zoom in. This is all of Charlotte County. We have the Peace River here. We have the Mayaka River here. It all flows into Charlotte Harbor and then out to the Gulf. We today are looking at Punta Gorda Isles, which is right here. Punta Gorda means fat point and Punta Gorda Isles is that fat point. You can see it right here. Now let's zoom in a little. This is PGI or Punta Gorda Isles. Locals call it PGI, so you'll hear me use that term a lot. I'm gonna, like I said, go over the boating rules here and the boating access, and I'm gonna tell you about it as it pertains to real estate. So we're gonna start this green line. I drew this myself, so give me a little uh, grace here. Some of it, uh, it's not a perfect drawing, but it is the border of Punta Gorda Isles. This part is undeveloped, so there's no roads for me to follow but down here, it actually splits this road, Almar, in half. One half is in PGI and one half is not. Up here, we have in the black, sort of, I call it a square often, but it's obviously not. It's, <laughs> it's the powerboat section. The reason we call it the powerboat section is because these dark spots here are bridges. You can't have a sailboat in this section because it won't make it under the bridges. The bridges are about 13 feet at mean high tide. So if you have a high center console or a bimini top that is going to be tough for you, you just want to pay attention to that. The powerboat section is a great section, though. I often like to refer to it as the boat to dinner section because I know many people who pop out right here and go to Fisherman's Village uh, where there's dining, shopping, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's a, a great thing to do, obviously. The rest of the map is all sailboat water. If it's on water, this is a golf course here. Uh, but we're going to break the sailboat sections down a little bit so you understand them better. We'll start here with the old sailboat section, or some people call it the original sailboat section. Punta Gorda Isles was built from the north to the south. So when you look up here, you in this section, you see some of the oldest homes in Punta Gorda Isles because they were started in the 60s. You also see some of the biggest McMansions. People are tearing down those 60s homes. Not all of them, people do live in them, uh, but you do also see some very big homes. And the reason for this is this access. It is extremely close to the harbor. Uh, you can stand on some of these docks and just see out to the harbor. It's great for a serious boater. If you have dreamed of having a big sailboat behind your house, you know, for 30 years, you're going to love this section. However, here's the catch. <laughs> There's always a catch. When you compare pricing to the powerboat section, sometimes you see 80 or $100,000 difference depending on what you're looking at. So you might look online and see a home and it is, you know, similar square footage, similar age, and, you know, it's located in this section. And then when you get close to the harbor here, it could be, 80 grand more. If you don't understand the boating, you're going to look at that, especially if you're not a big boater, you might think, you know, it's not such a big deal. But if you are a big boater, that's how those prices got like that. Because the people who have dreamed of having a big sailboat their whole lives are like, we will pay it and be happy. This is a fantastic, you know, area for us. So just know if, if you know, you pay for the water. 
That being said, you don't buy the water. All of the canals are run by a canal maintenance pro uh, program in our city. Um, most of the exits are dredged to six feet at mean low tide. We're going to get into that when we get more, when we get to the next uh, access points. But here they stay pretty, pretty clear. I say that in there this spring actually uh, dredging in here a little bit, um, but usually up here, it's not such a problem. Inside the canals, you see, you know, eight to 15 feet of depth. It's not a problem inside the canals. It's these access points that we have to take care of. So then we come down, this is Ponce Inlet. Uh, some people call this maybe the new, new sailboat section. It's not really new. It started, there's, there's some 70s homes in there, but it's newer than up here. A lot of people say they live near Ponce Inlet um, because it's the other way out. Still sailboat in here. And even in here, if you're very close to Ponce Inlet, you're going to pay more than in here or even further from, this is further from open water. The further you get from open water, the more you are going, or the less, I'm sorry, you're going to pay for a house. So the closer you get, the more you're going to pay. The further you get, the less you're going to pay. Most of my customers have what I like to call this houseboat balance. And that means they have an idea of what they want for their boat. And maybe it's even truly they have a, a budget for buying a house and a boat. But sometimes it's, okay, we want to be this close to open water. We want, you know, a kitchen like this. We want a, a garage like that. And they balance just like any other aspect of buying a house. They balance out those priorities because the prices do vary so much when you get, you know, when you add the boating in. It's kind of like living very close to a city. The more transportation you have into the city or the closer you are to the city, is going to make a big difference in pricing. The difference is in boating water, it's not just access, it's also seawalls and seawall size, which we're going to get it, get to in a moment. So you have Ponce Inlet here, then this is an old barge canal. You cannot get out here. It's on a lot of street maps. It's When you look at it on a satellite map, you can tell the difference, but um, it is it is not, there's no access. Then you get down here and this is Buckley's Pass. Now Buckley's Pass is only a few years old. It is not as of February of 2023 on a lot of street maps, including a lot of real estate street maps. I mean, they're street maps, they're not thinking about the water. However, the water really affects our pricing. So you need to know it's there whether you're ever gonna use it or not. Now, I said earlier that we try to keep the canals dredged. We have a fantastic canal maintenance program here. In fact, if you, you know, see a shallow part of the canal or you think something's off, you can call the city and they will come investigate. Um, they do keep our canals looking fantastic. If you've ever visited, you know what I'm talking about because it's, it's a big, it's what most people come here for, live in Punta Gorda Isles for. That being said, it is much easier to keep this up here dredged than down here. If you look at a um, map. Okay, so this is just good old Google Maps satellite view. Again, this isn't on the street maps view, but you can see all the silt around here. Also, this is, uh, it's not narrow, but there's definitely traffic in there. So you, boat traffic. So if you have a really large boat, you might, uh, consider you might you might play with what time you enter and exit that um, it might be a consideration it is still a fantastic place we there used to be no way out and I'll t when we go back to the other map I'll talk to talk about that in a minute um, but this is Ponce Inlet again you see that it could fill in a little bit easier our canal maintenance keeps it dredged really well though they do a fantastic job but up here this is the old sailboat section again you can see where it doesn't quite have the same problem. They do maintain it. They are dredging it this spring um, or part of it. So it does happen. It's just not as uh, prevalent. Okay, so a couple more things on this map just to finish off PGI. And then we're gonna talk about seawalls and seawall size. So you come down, this is you know maybe the new sailboat section. I don't know if you can get away with calling it that around town. Probably close to Ponce is where you wanna say. And then you have down here, you have the Rim Canal. These are all mangroves. These little lines in them, you can't get out by any kind of boat, maybe a kayak, but I certainly wouldn't use this to navigate 
my way out with a kayak. Uh, there are sort of locals know the ways in and out, in and out of there. But the mangroves are here, they're protected. So a, a, another thing a lot of people like is these rim canal views. They like to look at the mangroves. It's very nice. You do see price hikes if you're on the rim canal. So just keep that in mind. Another thing to think about if you see a house and you're like, why is that this way? Because the rim canal, uh, it could be if that's the view. This section over here is called the bird section. Now the bird section is a really interesting part of PGI and that's why I wanted to get back to this map. It was developed last in the uh, early 80s. It was really developed. Uh, my mom sold real estate as well and she talks about you know, being able to see across. There are no homes here. Now it's pretty filled in, uh, but in the early 80s it started and they made it differently than they, if you look up here, it looks very different. And I often have customers who've driven around in it and they say to me, why is it so windy? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on with those roads? It's for the views. The one thing up here that is a little tough for some people is cross the canal views. Down here, you get all this windiness, you get wider views, you get longer views. But for a long time, Buckley's Pass wasn't there. So I would have customers who wanted to be close to open water, but also love this section because you have all newer homes. I mean, it really took off, I would say, in the 90s and early 2000s. So you do have homes that are a little bit older, but the curb appeal is very nice like that. And you have um, you have these windy roads making all these views. The problem was if you were up here, this, these are condos, but if you were up here or up here five, six years ago, you had to go all the way around. I used to have to tell customers this all the time and they wouldn't be happy with me. You had to go all the way around out Ponce Inlet. It was about an hour to open water. So you can imagine that it took 10 years to get Buckley's Pass uh, approved and engineered and all the things, but you can imagine when they actually cut through there, how exciting it was for this section, because now the longest you really are from open water anywhere in PGI is about 30 minutes. So that's pretty exciting. Let's move on to the seawalls. The first thing you need to know about PGI seawalls is they are owned and maintained by the city. This is something that attracts a lot of people to PGI. What it means, I tell people to think of it like the roads. You, If your pothole comes in, in front of your house uh, on the road, you don't go out with concrete, fix it. You call the city. Same thing with your seawall. If something starts to go bad on your seawall, you call the city and they come out, investigate, and fix it. This is not only an advantage to you financially as a homeowner, but consider this. You might say, let's say you lived in this house here, um, and you think to yourself, well, I would always, like I would never let my seawall, I'm just, I would always take care of it. I would never let it crumble to the ground. That's great. But you look across the canal at these other houses and even vacant lots. Who knows who owns them? Maybe they don't care. Maybe they do. I don't know these people. I just picked this off the tax appraiser's website. But you would be looking at a crumbling mess, not in PGI, that you know if something goes wrong, the city's going to come out and fix it. And again, they are very good about this. Um, I put, Like I said, I pulled this off the tax appraiser's website. I picked some um, streets where there's some, some differing seawall sizes, because that's what I really want to talk about is the seawall size. So seawall size greatly affects your property value. If you look at these corners, this is where most people get confused, and it's really important to understand. Most corner lots are between 30 and 40 feet, and you get a 45 degree angle to put your boat or dock out. Well, really your boat here. So you see it kind of makes a triangle. Now over the years, the dock builders have gotten smarter and smarter and they make these little triangle docks. So you can see what they've done here. The important thing to know is on those type of uh, uh, seawalls, those size seawalls, you're only going to get maybe a 22, sometimes a 24 foot boat, but it's not like you can put a 35 foot boat on a 35 foot seawall that that won't work same thing here you have a little angle here now you have 51 feet you have a little bit more space here but the size of your waterfront 
affects the price of your house. I get calls quite often where people will say, see a lot like this and say, let's say this were for sale. And they say, oh my gosh, we're looking at lots. And the biggest lot, because this is a big lot, the corner lots are often large. So we got, this is less expensive than an 80 by 120, which is our standard size. Why, you know, did I just find a unicorn of the best real estate value ever? Unfortunately, no, because the size of the seawall is what's what really matters here. Um, so these are the least expensive lots out there. However, if you want to put a big garage and you don't care so much about waterfront, you could look at it as a, as a deal. You just need to know that if you pay less now for a house because it's on a small waterfront here, when you go to sell it, you're going to sell it for less. That's just how it works, how it has worked. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, when you have more standard size lots, like I said, 80 by 120, this one's very close is what's considered our standard lot. You can, you can do a lot on that. You can put a very large boat uh, depending on the depth and where you are. Um, but when you get bigger than 80 feet, I usually think of 85 feet. You can put two boats. You can see this guy has done that. He has a big boat and then maybe a boat for tooling around in the day and they've put it on a diagonal here. So that's a great idea too. This is going to increase his home value by having 102 feet over 80 feet. So anywhere you go on that spectrum, it, it affects your the value of your property and it's something you need to know when you buy real estate. Now, obviously there are some nuances when buying waterfront for your boat in Punta Gorda Isles. If you have a catamaran or a very special boat, I have sold to catamaran owners in this neighborhood and they are very happy, but it does take a little bit more than one video to go through that. It's more of a lot by lot, house by house situation please feel free to reach out. My contact information is below. Again, that relocation guide with the map is below. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I keep looking online and I see this area called Burnt Star Isles. Burnt Star Isles is the major com competing neighborhood with Punta Gorda Isles. And I'm gonna get to that next week. It's actually the neighborhood I grew up in. So it's not that I'm neglecting it, it's next week. So subscribe if you wanna see that. Also, if you'd like some neighborhood tours, if you're wondering what these neighborhoods look like, I have those in my shorts. I have them on Instagram and on Facebook. So all the links are below. Let me know what I can do to help and I will see you next week.